Otic ganglia pathway for the ferritic gland. So let us make it easy. Just draw the four zero. Just draw four zero. Make this one nine and make this P. So this will be for nine cranial narrow glossopharyngeal narrow. This will be for foramina ovae. This is for otic ganglia and feeble paper parotid gland. Now zero is less. So less means lesser superficial fetrosal narrow. And less can be also called inferior. So inferior salivatory nucleus. This is how you will remember it. And inferior ganglia of cranial narrow number nine. Glossopharyngeal narrow. Cranial nerve will give us a branch called tympanic nerve, which will form tympanic flexes, and then nerve will come out, which is called lesser superficial fetrosal nerve, which will cross through foramina ovae and will come into aortic ganglia, and then from aortic ganglia will move into the ferrotic gland. Now, before aortic ganglia, these are called free ganglionic, and after aortic ganglia is called forced ganglionic fiber. Now it will join by narrow. This is V3 mandibular narrow, a branch of which is called auriculotemporal narrow. So fiber from aortic ganglia will join the auriculotemporal narrow to supply ferrotic gland. So pharyngeal narrow will leave the skull through jugular foramen and at the foramen level it is consisting of superior ganglia and below it having inferior ganglia. The nucleus which is responsible for ferrotic gland or aortic gland supply that is inferior salivatory nucleus. So the fibers of inferior salivatory nucleus will leave the glossopharyngeal narrow at the inferior ganglia as a branch which is called tympanic branch and this tympanic branch is going to form tympanic flexes in the middle ear cavity which is also called tympanic cavity. Now the branch from the tympanic cavity will come out which is called lesser superficial fetrosal narrow. Uh, but this lesser superficial fetrosal nerve will get inside into the skull through an opening which is called opening or hiatus of petrosal nerve or opening of petrosal nerve. As we know that the glossopharyngeal nerve leave the skull through jugular foramen and the lesser superficial fetrosal nerve will get again into the skull. Now from the skull this lesser superficial fetrosal nerve will come outside and this is through the foramina which is called foramina ovae and will come into aortic ganglia. Aortic ganglia, this fiber will join the auriculotemporal nerve and will give supply to the parotid gland. I mean parasympathetic supply to parotid gland. Uh, for the parasympathetic supply, we know this one is 1973. Okay, this is one is 10, this is 9, and this is 7, and this is 3, as you guys can see here. So the third will give a third nerve will give a ganglia that is called ciliary ganglia the seventh will give us a ganglia that is called terigo palatine ganglia and also submandibular ganglia uh, the seventh cranial nerve will get their uh, these fibers from this fiber to the superior salivatory nucleus as you guys can see seven is upper and then we have nine so for the seventh superficial uh, superior salivatory nucleus and for the ninth that is inferior salivatory nucleus this is superior so there will be greater superficial fetrosal narrow. It is inferior so there will be lesser superficial fetrosal narrow. And this is for aortic ganglia, parotid. And the tenth uh, cranial narrow will give us the terminal ganglia. Ganglia. First of all, we will be talking about the location. The location, uh, the aortic ganglia is located in the infratemporal fossa below the foramina ovae. Foramina ovae start with O and aortic ganglia is also start with O. This is how we will remember it. Now, the topographically, the aortic ganglia is re uh, related with the mandibular narrow. Okay, there will be two relations. One is the topographically and another is the functionally. So topographically, it is related with the mandibular narrow and functionally, uh, which is the, from the lesser superficial fetrosal narrow. So functionally, it is related with the uh, ninth cranial narrow, glossopharyngeal narrow. Now, this mandibular narrow, one thing it have a relation uh, with it is topographically. Second, this is located laterally. So, laterally, the aortic ganglia are having mandibular narrow. Posteriorly, aortic ganglia are having the middle meningeal artery. As we know, that to foramina ovae, foramina spinosum located posteriorly to foramina ovae. And this is uh, to, to foramina spinosum, the immune was MMS. MMS, MMS for middle meningeal artery and S is for spinosum. So, middle meningeal artery fast through foramina spinosum. These two are we can be only show we, this two can be only shown on this diagram. Now this was the ferrosympathetic supply and the mnemonic for foramina ovae was O men men is for mandibular O is for ovale and male the men can be called male so A is for accessory meningeal artery L E is for lesser superficial fetrosal narrow and E was for emissary vein. Now 
For the sympathetic supply it get from the superior cervical ganglia T1, T2 and this superficial cervical ganglia the nerve will come outside and wrap around this middle meningeal artery and will get inside into the aortic ganglia without synapsing, uh, synapsing here it will go directly and supply the parotid gland.